Hello, Music Multiverse listeners. Welcome to Beyond Your Radio. I'm your host, Mark Kuligowski. It's time for panelists' favorite show tonight, albums from 2010. Before we get into it, if you're here again, OMG. If Thanks, you're Mom. new to our little music appreciation channel, hang around, subscribe, like, comment. Why? It's too late. What is the most resilient parasite? Bacteria? A virus? An intestinal worm? An idea. Resilient. Highly contagious. Once an idea has taken hold of the brain, it's almost impossible to eradicate. Obviously, that's from Inception. Again, subscribe, like, and comment, because the last thing you want is a music-obsessed Polak like myself infiltrating the level of your dreams to plant my ideas. This is album of 2010. I've got Jeff from lovely Tampa, Florida. I've got my <laughs> wife, Sue Kuligowski, from just upstairs with the blurred, mysterious background, otherwise known as Susie Q, as her shirt states, and... The music aficionado, the record sales guy who told the radio stations, this is what you should be playing, even if I have to bribe you, Jeff Crichton. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. How challenging was this for you? It was challenging for me. Not a fan of the year, quite frankly. It seems uh, to be a theme. Not not that difficult, because I I've I keep running lists. You each do. year, so yeah. If anybody, uh, well, I don't know if they can follow you any way they want to, but uh, Jeff does a does his list, and it's fun to the singles and albums and tracks. It's great, mm -hmm, it's great. like a history lesson. So, um, uh, no easy chore. I uh, a lot of good albums and some worthy discussion, but uh, building those standouts took some deep dives. Um, so we'll uh, start with ladies first, and then we'll go to Jeff Young, and then Jeff Crichton, and then I'll do my. Uh, we'll do one at a time. So Sue, I'll let you kick us off with your number five. All right, and I don't, I don't really know if there's like I have an order on these or not, but this is how the order. You have been um, ordered to put them in order. Yeah, I don't follow orders. Um, <laughs> so in 2010 was a really crazy year in our household we like expanded our family we moved we were out of country and with two toddlers um it's kind of where a lot of my music following kind of took a hiatus so um I remember like bits and pieces of music from that time and kind of had to dip back in a little bit um and because I'm trying to uh, understand her popularity and the girls are into her a little bit now and, um, you know, she's larger than life, I went with Taylor Swift's Speak Now. Um, it was her third studio album, I believe. And um, Mark, you know that, like, I've never been like a, a I'm not a Swifty. Um, no. But I'm willing to give it a try. And I have to say, though, and she was obviously a bit younger then, um, I really, it's it's a nice sound. Um, there's kind of, it seems like there's still a blend, a little bit of twangy country um, growing into the pop and the stories are starting to come out. Um, you know, it, I wouldn't call it angsty. It's, it's about, I guess it's about, breakups and moving on and everything but they're not really angsty songs um they are kind of catchy uh, this one had back to december and it was it's kind of soft it's soul bearing it's a little bit vulnerable um mine was more twangy definitely had that country flair and it makes me wonder if i would want to go back and listen to her country um because i i never really did um other songs on the album were long live last kiss and haunted uh so I'm just kind of starting to get into this a little bit, and um, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. I don't really, again, I think it was just the timing in my life that I kind of went off track of a lot of up-and-comers at that point. I don't know. It's a big fog, but um, speak now, I guess. And is this, the, is this the one that she's rewriting? 
the song? Yes, it was re-released, yeah. and okay. what she calls it, her version. Okay. So yeah. my assumption there, based on what I read and what I've seen, and this, <clears throat> this, this, I don't know, woman makes no wrong choices right now. Just can't make a single wrong choice. Um, it's the way she would have wanted it now that she knows what she knows now. So I, it's weird. I'm not. She, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like as a woman, like as as a former girl, you know, it's weird to me that someone um, can write so many like love songs and just it's been a string of disastrous relationships. If if they're even, I don't know if they're real or not. It's so hard to tell. I don't understand her. I guess I don't relate at all. Um, but I do under. She's talented. Her music is good. Kids love to sing it out loud. Um, it's an interesting light. I don't know. She I don't know what's is going responsible. On with her. She is responsible for the resurrection of record, the yeah. record store, everything. She is. She's. It's. It's unreal. I don't. There's some things I don't get, but I will say I believe 1989 is being redone and will be out in October 27th. Um. Ryan Adams did that entire record his way and got critical acclaim for it. And all the Swifties love that. Uh, so, I mean, she's definitely got, I mean, it's a songwriter's world uh, yeah. for her. Right? She, yeah. 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 Right. People. Right. I don't know. Jeff, you were, you were probably in and around the time, right. Where she was. Mm, at the beginning. Yeah. But she, I mean, like she's the only person, she's the only artist that's sold his sells records now in the last few years and you know, maybe the only artist that's really sold records in the last 15 or 20. yeah yeah i i was at the record store today and the com i mean she's up said right up front and now he was paul was talking or not paul joe was talking about um the fact that other bands are now trying to emulate what she's doing what she's doing and just putting out an album that's only we're only going to do this many and it's going on on record store day or black friday and just condense it and sell it and get it out there and see what happens the list for black friday and i'm going to be with joe on one of the future shows um it's crazy the list the, and some of the and the bands that are on there it's excellent i i think some people mm -hmm. are going to enjoy the fact that some things are being resurrected um and mm -hmm. she's she's responsible for it really so it's a it's a good pick i you know, back in that day, I, I it's certainly not on my list, but I I love a couple of her records from uh, a few years back, and she made my top list uh, one year for uh, Evermore, I believe was the record. So. Mr. Young, what do you have at your number five? Um, the five I picked are ones that I just thought I kind of of, of all the ones listed for 2010. I probably spent most of my time listening to, which wasn't a lot. I think I was still listening to a lot of the 90s stuff and or early 2000, 2010. Some, about 2010, there wasn't any real, real release that I spent a lot of time listening to over and over. But um, I, this is the band that I was kind of introduced to uh, for Nightmare for Avenged Sevenfold. It was, it was the first time I really was introduced to them, even mm -hmm. though it was their fifth album. So that's why it kind of it's kind of memorable to me in that year. But um, and this album uh, debuted number one for them. On Billboard 200, uh, so it was you know critical success for them too. I think even their one before that was uh, taken pretty pretty well as far as critics. But uh, just you know, it's like all the songs are fairly similar with some uh, differences here and there. You know, the difference of harmonies or keyboards or you know power or hard vocals versus a little softer and your, your typical metal guitar solos, you know, and stuff like that. But it's just, it's good. You know, it's a good listen to. You can listen to the whole thing. It's not any song that's particularly too annoying, too hard, or, or vice versa. Um, you know, since then, honestly, I don't listen to a lot of Avenged Sevenfold. If it's on, like on my Pandora or something, I listen to it. But I'm not like going out and buying every album or listening to it or asking, you know, a downloader from you, Mark, or something like that. But, um, but it's, it's a good album, you know, straight through. And obviously, uh, you know, they had a couple singles that did pretty well. But you know the it's one of those bands you hear in video games, you know, um, but it's, it's a good album. So that's, that's the one I've been decent album cover actually too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, they have a new record this year that is completely and utterly different 
than their formula, their standard formula. It is a progressive metal album with classical tendencies at the end. It's it's mind blowing at the end. So yeah, really one of those shockers for me that they, yeah. You know, when you look at the covers, you're thinking, you're thinking Maiden, you're thinking Dark. You, th- you know what I mean? You're it, it's yeah, but it's not. You know, and now they come out with this new one. It's different. <clears throat> good, good pick. I, they were on my list too. Probably the only. Uh, there are two metal albums. I think they're on my list that where I was thinking about. All right, Jeff. What uh, what do you got for number five? Uh, number five for me is uh, a record that was released on July twelfth of twenty ten. Uh, per- sixth album by the. Band from uh, the other side of the pond from Mercy Beat band called the Coral. Ah, okay. do you know them? I I know I know like a couple of songs. When when I knew that that was on the list of looking down, I went, I have one of those records, but I didn't think it was that one. Right? It's, it's kind of a um, jingly jangly jangle pop British yeah pop, yeah, pop yeah. Uh, little psychedelia. Um, their album is called Butterfly House, uh, yeah. produced by um, uh, John Lukey. I think that's his name. He he did uh, the Stone Roses and Radiohead. Oh, uh, what and, what Stone Roses record did he do? Because the second was it the second coming? <laughs> oh, he might have done the first. He might have done the first me. album. He might have done the first record. Stone Roses record. Okay. Um, three part harmonies, really good. Um, you know, think of. Um, Thick like you know, uh, 1967 68 Hollies, yeah. I can, they, I can they, had, they had they had a record called Butterfly, so I'm wondering if you know, Butterfly Agreed. House had any connection. It because the Hollies Butterfly record was known here in the states as King Midas in reverse. Um, that was the last Nash record, uh, um, okay, with the Hollies. Uh, was... but yeah, I, I like this record a lot. Um, they're a really good band. Solid, solid record from beginning to end. They they've got a big catalog, right? They're around a while. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like six, eight out. Okay, so if I remember, well, they, this was their sixth album. So. This was their sixth, right? So, so yeah, like two or three after that, at least. Yeah. If, if I'm not you ever see them live? No. Mm-mm. Yeah, but I wonder if solid. they ever came around here. I don't know. Yeah, they never did. I, you know, they might have. Mm-hmm. like it. Might have been in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, well, there there are some London bands that never. I mean, there was a. We, I was thinking about doing a show on that because I'm just sitting there going, bands that never came across, right, and that don't come across right now because I've done some people I've had conversations yeah. with and they're like they never come to the U.S. They're I don't know whether they're afraid or it's too much money. I don't know. Yeah, because the they they almost remind me of uh, the band Ride. Okay, that one yeah. I know. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get the yeah. ride. No. Okay, so I want to say. Like sometimes with the vocal, if it didn't change vocalists, right? Same vocalist, right? Yeah, yeah. There are some times where I think Bono with the way it's, and then isn't there like if they do the the three part harmony, and then it's gone. But um, there were like I don't remember what that what song I was listening to because when mm. when I knew I'm like God, I gotta go look at that, and I I listened to that the first couple of tracks on that record to see if it, it came back to me, but it didn't. But the one thing I remember is like. Kind of got that voice that the microphone loves, and then it, then the three part harmony came and it it dropped out. But yeah, just yeah, really good, good solid band, great record too. Oh, uh, okay. I just want to make sure mine were in the right order. <laughs> Get everything else ready. Forget about the order of mine. So, um, my number five, um, which I believe is the last album from uh, this band. Although I believe it is, you you know, always known as Sade, you know, uh, so this is Soldier of Love. It's the sixth studio album. It's they say it's an English band, but the fact of the matter is, I always just think of her. That's all. I, you know what I mean? They could have uh-huh. six strangers playing, and it wouldn't matter. Her voice is everything to to it all. So uh-huh. uh, I think there was that Soldier of Love was the lead single. Um, and I think they had uh, Baby, Father, and the, the Moon in the Sky was another release. But, you know, they had an eight-year hiatus, and then this comes out, and then I, there was nothing else after. There's a discussion of whether 
uh, things uh, had to do with personal life and whatever she was pursuing at that time. Um, but I miss that vocal. That's that's a sweet, soulful, yeah. you know, just mm-hmm. yeah. That's a mm-hmm. she, the female Marvin Gaye. I don't know. Maybe that's that. You know, you put that record on and you know, glass of wine, and you don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, so uh, it's it's a shame because I don't. I know there's not too many vocalists of that nature around anymore. And then sometimes with her, it's acoustic. Just only, and and they get that feel, but this had a lot more uh, going on. It's a little bit bigger sound. So that's my number five. Back to you, Sue. Unless somebody's got an additional comment. Sorry, I, didn't... I do not. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm yeah, surprised it was on, it's on pick. Jeff's list. <laughs> that's a, that's not, I didn't expect that pick from you, but that's okay. It's I, I this was I. I really went through and I'm like, you know, what do I now back in 2010, I can tell you right now, back in 2010, when it was going on, all five of my bands, all five of my number one albums, five albums would have all been Canadian. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Go ahead, Sue. All right. So um, I picked him before and I'm picking him again. And I, some of the songs, like, you know, there's some swearing going on that I'm not a big fan of, but these two songs definitely stood out from 2010 and that, you know, that time period, um, Recovery by Eminem. Um, and of course the two songs, Not Afraid and Love, Love the Way You Lie, which featured Rihanna and was played everywhere. Um, you know, I don't have I don't have a crazy amount of things to say that I haven't already said about him. Um, just that it, it was it was it was another good album, um, and he stayed true to himself. Some people apparently felt that he went a bit poppy on this one and mainstream, but I don't think so. I, I think it's his signature style throughout. Um, and the album again, you know, with the swearing without, it's gritty, it's raw, it's Eminem. Um, and, but always beneath it, you know, there's vulnerability and, um, he's just telling his story with his words and the way he sees the world. And so I respect him for that and just good songs. So that's it. Through multiple personality disorder. Yes. Well, you know what yeah. I mean? Always the character, the character, the character. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's kind of, I, I mean, that's, that's kind of brilliant though. So yeah, I, 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 I 100% agree. Uh, I was, I was talking to Joe again, at the record store today and. That album was sitting there, and he goes, "What do you think of that record?" I go, "It's friggin' genius." I I didn't want to listen to it. I didn't want to hear it. And when I heard it, I went, "Wow!" It's just you have to give the kudos to what it is. It may not be, you know, it's it's definitely not not a peaceful record by any means or anything that he does peacefully. But I don't know that record for me didn't make my list. I wasn't even on it because I I just remembered. It seemed to sell pop kind of thing. He added what pink is on there too, I think, on that record. Um, so it just seemed like a gimmick uh, to me at certain points, but okay. I can understand why. It's... Yeah. Jeff, number four. Uh, I went with a, I don't know what number album this was. It was another commercial breakthrough. Brothers from the Black Keys. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, Howl the Moon, they still play it at the mm-hmm. sports stadiums, and <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> their first single. But um, I like the album, you know, because it's got a, a more a, a larger quantity of songs than most albums do these days. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's good the whole way through. I mean, it's good whether it's listening into the background or you're just driving down the road or whatever at a party. I mean, you can play this man anywhere. And um, I've had unfortunately not been able to see them live they come a couple times yeah. sold out before i get a ticket and uh i i, I gotta believe they're awesome live but yeah uh, yeah so you've seen them mm-hmm. that's cool yeah where'd you see them i saw them when they first signed to warner brothers and i can't remember where exactly it was yeah anyway good album that's that's the one i picked yeah, that'd be that would be right at the very beginning, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not that the album, the first albums aren't bad either. You know what I mean? It, it's, right. 
yeah. there's a little bit of production situations probably because of you know they're not going to give you the greatest guy known to man but um yeah. i think that album had well i know eh, more on that later as you can tell <laughs> i'll uh send it up to jeff criden okay number four 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 four, four. four. <laughs> This record has so much soul by a living legend. Um, the second album of her of her comeback of her long illustrious career, uh, Mavis Staples, "You Are Not Alone," uh, well, produced man. by produced by Jeff Tweedy. Um, it's like an, another record from beginning to end, um, just. Uh, perfect i think that album is perfect it you know it's weird because it won a grammy award for best americana record and i, I don't know how it fell into that category yeah i, I, I would have picked, picked right i would have picked it like his you know uh, um old school r&b you know mavis because of her career gospel yeah uh, it's and you know tweety uh plays multi-instruments on it um her voice just Sounds great. You know, the album before that was, was great, too, that Ry Cooter produced. Um, she's, just, she's just a gem. And and I, I was coming, I was flying back from San Francisco back in 1990 um, from, a, from a convention. And I'm in the airport and Pop Staple comes walking by. And I said, like, oh, my gosh. So I drop my bags, leave them with my wife, and I go like running up to him. And I said, like, Pops, I said, I told him what I did for a living. And, and, and I said, I saw you walking by. I couldn't let the moment go by without coming up, shaking your hand and saying, thank you for the music that you gave, that you've given to the world all these years. Uh, so, but his daughter's record back in 2010, what a great record. I, I'm if there's any record that people take away from tonight, okay, that's the one. That's the one that has probably been overlooked by anyone in my age bracket or below that you need to revisit or look at and listen to. Uh, she is she's not she's not noted as the Ella Fitzgerald or the uh, you know Nina Simone or she, but she but she could be God, she could she should have been. Should, should be, I guess. You know, that's yeah, yeah. And, and, great record. And, and the staple singers like put out many, many, many records over, over yep. the years, and she was the main voice. Uh, but you know, I mean, she's what, like, I'll probably hit close to 80 at least yeah. now. Must be um, now, yeah. I'd have to, yeah, to look. I, I just know when I hear that vocal, I'm like, but you know, back, doesn't sound back, like an old back, person, no, no, but man, her it's 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 a the record's great. Yeah, she could, uh, great. You could still tour with the Stones. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> Back, backup singer and opening act. They don't need an opening act, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a that's a great record. Um, I listened to it today again when I saw it on your list, and I went, "Gosh, could I? Should I?" I'm like, "No, he's got that." I no, I'm I'm gonna leave it out. <clears throat> so that's what I love about when I get the list ahead of time, I can make sure that. We, you know, there's going to be overlap, but I, I, when yeah. somebody has like, oh man, I don't want to steal in thunder. Great, great choice. All right, so my number four is another female, and uh, more into the Canadian side of things. Yes, so this is Sarah Sleen, and it's Beauty Lives the B sides, and I guess it's Beauty mm -hmm. Lives B sides. Um, what happened was Sarah had a record called The Baroness. And these were the outtakes from the Baroness. And when you have this many outtakes uh, and you can form an album from it, I think that's uh, that's quite cool. Um, again, this is her at a classical pianist delivering stories that feel Baroque, right? And uh, are whimsical, yet comical, yet... I don't know. I'm I'm getting crazy. Faustian. I don't know. It's it's she is she is a gem. She is a one of a kind. There is nobody that does what she does. Uh singing as a male, singing as a as a tortured 
soul from you know the 1700s past etc this has some some stellar moments on it but again it, it's all in that vein of uh, of a classically put pianist as well as like in a jazz uh motif um mm -hmm. i we've seen yeah. i've seen her a couple of times not this is deep in the catalog so not much of the stuff gets out of here but what's hilarious is earlier today this morning she had tweeted and she doesn't tweet very much anymore and that's kind of how i met with her and things happen um that's another story for another day she said i'm hitting middle age i'm she was eating some candy bar or something like that and i i shout i mean she is now she's writing an opera she's teaching at the royal york university and doing something else on the side for another um symphonic thing going on and she did that so i said well in your own words everything by the gallon and put the gaff in there and then i said really you're burning the candle at both ends and for some reason you feel inclined to stick a wick in the middle and she just before the show went on she shouted back ha 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 so um good good a good lady uh and a hell of a musician uh you know the tori amos of canada i guess we'll call her. Mm. sue number three is she your musical crash mark? Um, yes, absolutely. When her voice comes on, when she's, yes, she is a musical crush. No question. I don't think there's an album I can say that I won't listen to. Yeah. Even though it might not be that good. <laughs> but I don't, you know, I'm I'm a par terrible judge of that character, I guess. Um, all right, well, my number three, this is three, right? Is three. Another female. Um, three in a row. So this, I didn't know it existed until I was looking into albums for this show. Um, so this is kind of a little treat for me. Um, it's Memphis Blues, 11th studio album by Cindy Lauper. Um, it's covers, classic blues songs. Um, didn't know what to expect, but I have to say that she really brought it on on a lot. There's a few of the songs that are that maybe I could do without, but um, she did Crossroads by Johnny Lang. Did a really nice job. Um, Mother Earth is really good. She did Early in the Morning, BB King. Um, Down, don't 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 bother me. I'm gonna say his name wrong, but Charlie Musselwhite maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Harmonica guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, if if you want to hear something a little bit different, you're in the mood for blues, and um, it's definitely worth a listen. I'll probably I'll probably listen to it again when I have more time. But uh, didn't know it existed, and she did a good job. I never I never would. Have, her name came up the other night. Who who were we out to see, Mark? Um, oh well, it was uh, uh, Joan Osborne. No, but I mean the opener. Oh, Jill Sobel. Yeah, she said she had done some work with her, right? So beautiful. Sorry, I didn't say her name right. So, um, I guess I didn't, I've never given her enough credit because uh, she does really have some good range. Um, and this was 2010, so, so you know, um, good vocals, enjoyable listen, Memphis Blues. I remember, um, come on, late show, David Letterman, um, who's the piano guy. Oh, Paul, Paul, Paul Schaefer. Paul, Paul, Paul Schaefer. Schaefer. Paul Schaefer making the statement saying that he always they asked him what he who he thought had the best vocal he'd ever heard, and he said Cindy Love. Mm -hmm. And Bob. then his second his second was um, Annie Lennox. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Annie Lennox was second to Cindy Lauper. I know it was weird, but just I remember wow. him saying that. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, wow, maybe I need to go back, and I want to say. You know, it was after, it wasn't during the, the whole, when she was popular or anything of that nature. It was just, you know, I might've gone like Stevie Nicks and, and uh, Annie Lennox and, you know, people that had that, that real, but he said she has range that nobody knows about. Well, that's what I'm saying. Have you heard this at all, Mark, or no? Yeah, I did. Yep. Um, yep. I think if she, if she had, I don't, practice is probably the wrong word, but she, she definitely could have gone further, I think. Um, I mean, it wasn't her thing, though, so 
you know, right. you want to do what you want to do too, but right. she has it in her. Cool. Nice pick. Something different. <clears throat> yeah. Jeff Young, what is your number? I picked the Oracle from Godsmack. Okay. It's a very good album. It's not great by any means. I mean, if you like Godsmack, this is up your alley. If you like, you know, like this is the, an album where they kind of, it's their fifth album. They kind of went back. Um, they had said in an article, they went back, tried to go back to more of a, just a straight ahead, heavy sound, more simple songs. That kind of is what made them, successful in the first place um and that's really what it is um you know pretty good song you know the first one is you cry like a bitch which got some airplay and um but you know typical heavy decent vocals you know good guitar um not you know it's it's baby bear it's just right <laughs> so uh yeah <laughs> anyway that's the one i picked for five i don't have a ton of much ton to say on them i mean i've I saw them once, but I don't think it was for that album. I think it was for an earlier album. But uh, anyway, it was it's good. Yeah, if that if that album was like um, in a listing, probably fall somewhere in the middle. For sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think the new one would fall much higher in that listing. New one's really good, really good. Jeff, are you doing three, 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 three? three. You know, so. <clears throat> If you're from New Jersey, so here's here's some questions. If you're from New Jersey and you're a band, you're more likely to like Bon Jovi, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> yeah, that that yeah yeah of course of course. Yeah. And and thought you was gonna say the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, sir, so there's there's this band called the gaslight anthem uh, that uh their third album called american slang that was released on i love this the name of this label uh side one dummy records <laughs> i love it yeah I love it. and yeah. so um you know they were formed in new brunswick new jersey in, in uh, 2006 um american slang is the third album um just for uh, another record from beginning to end like really strong rock and roll songs uh you know if you like bruce and the e street band if you like the clash mm -hmm. lyric, yeah a lot of little bit of punk i would yeah, yeah lyri lyrically if if you know maybe teeter and tom waits influenced lyrically uh, okay. but a great record american slang by the Gla gaslight anthem and much to my surprise, um, they have a new album coming out in three weeks uh, called yeah. History Books. So three weeks from tomorrow on the 27th. So I'll be eagerly, eagerly anticipating that one. So well, if if you're so inclined, that that you know that's a new release. I could we could do it on uh, album release a uh, uh, new album review on Saturday. You could pop in and say, hey, what what you think? Yeah, slide anthem. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's oh. number three, 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 three. <laughs> Sue, get to number two. What Did about you your number three? Yeah. Oh, we, oh yeah, my number three. Ah, see, how, how, how I lose order? Jeez, how <laughs> terrible am I? So mine is, you know, huh, how do I? Okay, so there's certain parts of jazz that are are just they're just kind of standard and it's good and it's, you know, and then there's somebody who takes it to a whole new level. There are ki all kinds of great jazz guitarists that I could mention and name drop and, and put on there. And one of them has already been on one of my top uh, albums of all time. And then there's this one guy hmm. who constantly reinvents everything. Now, just to give you a little context, his new record I, I reviewed, and it is the most quiet record I've ever heard. I don't know how he got the microphone into his acoustic <laughs> guitar the way he did, but that's Pat Metheny. Oh. And Pat Metheny's record, uh, Orchestrian, is a mind-blowing experience. But if you're into the record, 
you're not going to understand it as well. But if you saw him on that tour where he walks up and he starts to play the guitar in front of a, a stage that has the curtain drawn back, he winds up pulling the curtain back and all the instruments are sitting in cages. And he plays the instruments by, um, what are they, valves? And whatever it is, it's a musical experiment. It's he he said I forget he said he goes you guys want to know how I did all this and everyone's like yeah and he goes take too long to explain it I wouldn't be playing any songs he says but think of it this way I took apart my parents uh, player piano and I wanted to know how it worked this is the whole concept with an entire orchestra so technically Pat Thaney is playing every instrument on this album by what he plays on guitar. So there, these are five tracks, 52 minutes. Uh, it's it's definitely jazz, but it's, you know, you've got shades of ragtime. You've got um, everything from bass, percussion, cymbals, drums, uh, blown bottles, and other custom fabricated mechanical instruments. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a it's really probably one of the most unique records maybe ever made, at least in the jazz environment. Although yeah. jazz tends to to go a little avant garde more than most, so. well, that, wild record. Guy's a genius. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. he's a maestro. I I love it too when other people have him on to 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 play with him too. You know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Just I wonder if they go, "Will you please, please?" And I wonder if he goes, "Well, okay," <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so Sue, number two, thanks for reminding the order so that I didn't mess up. Well, I I actually almost picked him, but um, then I went way over here because of a certain <laughs> song. Um, again, remember 2010, I was getting probably an hour of sleep a night, and um, so this song, I just I just love I love I chose the album based on this song. Um, and then I listened to the album again, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's worthy, I think, in my opinion. Um, B.O.B. presents The Adventures of Bobby Ray. Um, this was discussed uh, yesterday. Somebody else was going to come on the show, and that was their that was their number one choice. I think I know who that would be. Yep. Uh, well, so the song I'm talking about is Airplanes, and yep. I have a memory. Um, I want to say that they played over at UB. Uh in the fall, it would have been, I believe, and oh, well, maybe the fall, I don't know, but there were, I want to say there were fireworks, they were playing, and I had Lauren, you know, she was still tiny enough that I was holding her right out here, listening from our door, and mm. um, still one of my little favorite memories, because I just, I think, I love it, it's a, like, it's a really cool song, but so then there's Airplanes too. Um, Eminem and Haley Williams of Paramore on that one. Um, Nothing on You, featuring Bruno Mars, Don't Let Me Fall, Lovelier, was that a spider? Lovelier Than You, um, has got a really nice vibe. It's a good, it's a good album. It's a nice listen. Um, it's, it's, I guess, <laughs> I guess it's Baby Bear. I, I enjoy it and I'm going to listen to it again. So. Is, is that the lady from Par Paramore? Was she on the record a lot? Is like is that was her was she this is before Paramore? Uh I think she been I think she was around at that time. I'd have to double check on that, to be honest okay. with you. She only appears in that one song, I believe. In the one song? Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Not a record I'm ultra familiar with, but it was discussed yesterday, yeah. It's I it's it's an it's an enjoyable record to listen to. Um and I always thought I always thought he was really talented and wished he would well maybe he did do more but like I said wasn't my the next several years you know I was watching um and listening to Iron Man and kids records and shark shark something right shark oh uh, well not baby shark but no <laughs> the, the shark yeah she the shark shows or whatever oh the shark shows yeah Jeff, your number two. Uh, I picked Diamond Dies by the Deftones. 
uh, mm-hmm. sixth album. It was a critical and commercially successful album for them. They had four singles um, that were released, uh, Diamond Eyes, Rocket, Skates, Sex Tape, and You've Seen the Butcher. Um, this was also recorded um, with the same producer that, that did Foo Fighters, Velvet Revolver, Stone Sour, and Alice in Chains. And uh, kind of makes sense when you listen to the album, I guess. But uh, uh, they, uh, there's this. Uh, they said they avoided using Pro Tools, which is like uh, it's like music software that I guess a lot of recording artists will use. Yeah. Um, but they said they, they strictly avoided using this. Maybe they've used it in the past because they uh, they wanted to favor writing songs together as a band and practicing them a million times. So they were perfect in order to achieve what they said they wanted a more raw and personable sound uh which i would say they succeeded at on this album um but yeah it's like uh definitely a good album um probably one of their more successful albums yeah yeah they've they've always they've never disappointed they've, they've put together some albums too that borderline progressive too and they can they can go either way i like them I, i've never seen them live i would like to but I feel that my age, I would not survive the show. <laughs> the way yeah. to go. Yeah, well, that's actually good. Well, I can think of other bands I'd rather go in, you know, maybe Rage Against the Machine. I don't make it out. I don't know. Well, I missed that show, and I also missed the stabbing that was at that show. So. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> Jeff Crichton, what do you have for number two? I have the great band Teenage Fan Club. Okay, so uh, their um, their ninth album actually. Wow, Shadows. So I first heard this band. You know, I'm going to bring up San Francisco again. The same the same trip that I I saw Pop Staples in the airport. I, I, I'm walking down I'm walking down uh, Hate Street, and uh, I, there's like a record store and. Every other store is a record store around there. Yeah. And so I walk in and there's this album playing on the turntable that just caught my ear. I'm like listening to it as I walk in, getting into it more as I'm uh, shopping there. And I go up to the clerk and I said, what is this record? And the clerk there said, oh, it's this <clears throat> new band called uh, Teenage Fan Club. And I said, Huh, what's the name of the album? It's a Catholic a Catholic education is the name of the album. It's on some <laughs> small, small independent label. And um and he says, Why? And I said, I, I have to have it. And and the clerk said, Well, this is our only copy. And I said, which means what? <laughs> well, we don't have it in stock. And I said, so why would you be playing why would you be playing a record that you don't, you don't have, have stock, stock in? I, I and he looked at me because it's freaking like awesome I had, like i had two heads <laughs> and i said look i used to work in a record store i said you know you don't play records that you don't have in in stock i said for somebody like me that wants to come in and buy it and and i said so i'll buy that copy that you're playing right now and and he said well i, I can't sell it to you and and i said why he said, because it's our only copy. And I said, well, it, it could be your former only copy. <laughs> and and uh, he said, well, well, I'll order it and it'll come in next week. And I said, I, I'm I'm here till tomorrow. I said, I live on the other side of the country. I said, you know what? I'll give you twice as much for what the, what that record's worth. I, I'll, wow. I'll give you $20 to give me that record. And he still wouldn't sell it to me. Uh, huh. I, I, I came home. And I thought I could get it uh, at Home of the Hits. And they couldn't get it from their distributor. So I called up my Warner Brothers counterpart in San Francisco, told her the story. She found it and mailed me a copy. And so since then, I've been a fan of Teenage Fan Club, who've, who's put out a, a, an album uh, back in August, uh, their new album uh, called Nothing Lasts Forever, which is their 12th mm-hmm. album. Uh, so if you like, you know, think uh, Big Star, okay, think influence like that, um, you know, maybe uh, lay it like, you know, mid-70s Beach Boys with the, with the harmonies, uh, but Teenage Fan Club Shadows, their ninth album, a great band, like all the records are really, really good, and they're a tight band, 
And um, I know they've played in Toronto a few times. Um, I have not had a chance to see them live, but I would love to. Um, they're from Scotland. They're Scottish. Yeah, band. Glasgow, Scot right? Scot Scottish band, yeah. Scotland. Yeah, go drink it with a Scotsman. Won't yeah. understand a word yeah. he's saying. But that, the Teenage Fan Club might be my favorite band of the last 30 years. I think after an experience like that, I'd be compelled. Every time I walked into a record store, if I heard something on the, wherever they're playing, I'd be compelled to go make sure they had it in stock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I, I was. Two. I was in a record store. I I handed an album for my buddy to play back in. This is probably more than a decade ago, and a guy walked in, uh, eighty year old man, albums playing. I'm in the back. And he, I, I watched him walk up to, to the counter and he goes, who's this, you know? And my buddy says, talk to him because <laughs> I don't have it. I don't know what it's about. And he just told me, play this. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it was Buckethead's coma, you ah. know, and it's a beautiful piece. But if you went and bought another Buckethead record, you would be sadly uh, disappointed because it'll be, you know, uh, a weird, uh, guitar aficionado electric wizardry kind of thing there you know when it when you the teenage fan club album covers i think they need they might need some work i'm not i i'm not <laughs> they're not the know, greatest that, but yeah the, the I, kind of the, you know whoever does their you know uh, art design nah but the music inside is i, I kind of thought retro but, but maybe that's why they haven't covers. been such a big band because there 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 was a top yep album cover is really important and it's funny if that is how the album cover is, it, you know, if it is, because sometimes it's truncated for, for digital, yeah. but you never put your name on the bottom. The record sits in the bottom. So how's anybody going to read it? Right. Yeah. Anyway, education for those that are starting a band and going to have a, make sure your name's at the top with the name of the album. Um, my number two. So it's, it's my show and I can do what I want. I have a tie. <laughs> This a is tie for number two. So they have like two A and two B. Yes, I have two A and two B because the bands are similar in their delivery of of what they do. So we'll be the judge yes. of that. Yeah. Okay. So obviously the Black Keys brothers, which Jeff had already mentioned, and I also have a, a, another bluesy kind of sound, but they take it to a different level, and that would be the Dead Weather and their album Sea of Cowards. And the Dead Weather, obviously, is led by the guitar craziness and stylings of Jack White mm. and the vocal insanity of uh, Allison Moinette. Oh, Allison Moinet. Moinet? 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 Uh, come on. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, right? From the Kills? From, from every, Everything But The Girl, right? Yes. No. Yes. Everything But The Girl and The Kills? Does both? Ah, yeah. oh, yep. hang on. Okay. So you would know, right? I'm hoping. Um, and also Dean from Queens of the Stone Age and uh, Mr. Lawrence from City in Color. Okay, so, well, well. okay. Um, I won't talk about the Black Keys because people know that record, whereas maybe the Dead Weather people are not as familiar with the Dead Weather, but their album that was prior to that called Whorehound had major success to the point where there was a song that was played on radio that people thought was Rage Against the Machine and how Jack White was playing. Um, this is their second record. Uh, it's got the blues, the funk, the guitar, and the lyrical delivery. As I stated, you can't deny her vocal, uh, which is That's kind good. of the same how the Black Keys male does that. And I, I like them both equally, and I thought it'd be a good chance to double up. And uh, Jeff already talked about the Black Keys, so we're good. So I got away with it. Anybody else wants to do it on the show, uh, it's just $5. Okay, uh, <laughs> Sue, you're number one. Muted. You're, you're muted. Mute. Okay. There you go. Uh, for All obvious right. reasons. Um. Well, and I I have like a little tickle in my throat. Oh, do you want us to bypass you for the moment? No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, so when I started my little list, this is actually down at the bottom, but then I listened a little bit more and I mean, 
Um, so it's Clapton, Eric Clapton, his 18th solo studio album. Um, I I love Eric Clapton. He can't do anything wrong by me. So um, what can you actually say about Eric Clapton? Obviously, great guitar, great vocals. It's a really well put together album, in my opinion. Um, a lot of blues, lots of jazz. A nice listen. So I don't really know what else to say about it. Hmm. Which Clapton album is it, Sue? Class, that'd be Clapton, Clapton, I think, right? Okay. Yeah. Trying to think of that record myself. I um traveling alone, hard time blues, rock and chair. Hard time blues. Okay. Autumn leaves, just a really just nice selection of songs. And... I think it's a long, it's a long record, isn't it? Um, I, I don't think how many songs were on there. I just I yeah, think. hour and nine minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, and he he actually I found a little quote. I mean, when they were putting it together, he, he obviously he wants every album to be good. Even I don't know how many he has now, 18th studio album. But um, he said with this one, he just kind of let it happen and was pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. So, um, yeah, can't go wrong with Clapton. No, no, you can't. I want to say that's probably... Uh, 20 albums maybe somewhere on there that'd be my yeah. guess okay. 20 records somewhere around there i don't i don't believe in christmas albums being an album but that's uh, another story. uh jeff young what's your number one i picked an album that has 14 tracks on it Oof. self-titled slash Okay. So this has a ton. I love that it's got so many different artists on it. So it's got Ian Asbury, the Cult, Ozzy Osbourne, Fergie, yeah. Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge, Chris Cornell, obviously of Soundgarden, uh, Andrew Stockdale, Wolf Mother, Adam Levine of Room 5, Lemmy of Motorhead, Dave Grohl, the Foo Fighters, which that actual song that he's on, he's not a singer, <laughs> he's the drummer. It's an instrumental. And uh, Kid Rock, M. Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold, Miles Kennedy again, uh, and then uh, Iggy Pop. The um, There was a bonus iTunes track uh, to help benefit the earthquake victims in Haiti, which mm -hmm. was uh, called Mother Marie with had, it had Beth Hart on it. And there was another song called oh. Crazy that was recorded with Chester Bennington mm -hmm. before he died. Um and then, um, but they, they never released the song because Linkin Park had an album coming out four months after this. So they just, they never released it, but then he passed away. So the rights to the song belonged to Linkin Park and, and Chester Bennington. I don't know. I don't know if they ever did anything with it. Um, but then Best Buy also had an exclusive digital version of this album. And it had two extra songs on it. One was Baby Can't Drive featuring Alice Cooper and Nicole Scherzinger of Pussycat Dolls. Stephen mm -hmm. Adler of Guns N' Roses and Flea of Red Hot Chili Peppers. And then another one, which was a cover of the Guns N' Roses Paradise City, which uh, had a combination of Fergie and Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just, uh, just just fun to listen to. I mean, and when they went on tour in 2010, uh, uh, Miles Kennedy just was the only, obviously, vocalist that toured with them uh, and later did a whole full album after that, but uh, just a good collection of of uh, songs. I mean, um, I thought really Fergie kind of stood stood out in it. Um, she was she sounded really good actually in it. Good good platform for that. What was the Beth Hart one? That was the you said Beth Hart, right? Yeah, it's called Mother Marie. That was the one that was released on iTunes. Oh, huh. I, I love Beth Hart, and I I didn't know that one. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Yeah, she is. They yeah, also had, good. I guess, a, a version that was released in Japan. They had a, a Japanese singer from at the time one of the most popular bands in Japan. He did an uh, English and a, a Japanese version. I only heard the Japanese version, but he does have a good rock voice. Um, you know, more in the more in the vein of like a Miles kind of, you know, not like hard and scratchy, but just a good voice. Yeah, it's it's funny. I was just looking at because when you said that, I was like, "Did he say Beth Hart?" And I, I looked it up, and I'm like. 
this album has is is like you would think it was like the Beatles. <laughs> it's well, you know what else? The, he uh, he said in an interview slash just after the album was released, he wanted to ask Tom York of uh, Radiohead Radiohead to do a song, but he didn't have the nerve to ask him. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm like, you're freaking slash, dude. Like, <laughs> Colin, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I made mean, this like it's like a Beatles, right? You, you got there's a Japanese edition, there's a Japanese deluxe edition, there's an Australian deluxe edition, which has 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 bonus DVD Whoa. sections. Uh, the Australian iTunes just said Paradise City, and then there was Chains and Shackles, right? That's uh, Nick Oliveri. Paradise and then City one with, edition right. on top of that that's 34 things and Monster Energy Drink Edition, Best Buy Napster in Latin America edition, Canadian Napster. edition, which probably features Gord Downey. I don't know, but uh it, it's just crazy. <laughs> there's some yeah. uh, there's some marketing. Yeah, holy the, cow, they the got Paradise their bang City out of that. With, uh, the Paradise City version with Cypress Hill and Bergie is good, like because she does like yeah. the refrain and everything. Yep, um, yeah, but those lyrics obviously lend themselves to just kind of like more speaking. Yeah, how do you do that in the studio and then go, okay, I'm going to tour? And everyone's like, well, you can't take us all with you. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be an expensive tour. Yeah. Yes, very expensive. Good pick. I like it. I I didn't realize all that extra stuff. I'm now I'm going to go back and dive into that. So, um, Jeff, it's time for your number one. You know, there was there was there was one guy uh, that made Led Zeppelin soar, made that band fly, and it was Robert Plant. And the one thing that I love about Plant, is, you know, his early records maybe tipped their head a little, you know, to Zeppelin, but he tried to stay away from that sound as much as he could. And he's reinvented himself so many times. Oh, gosh, that band's been gone for over 40 years. Um, so it, it, over over 40 years, he's, he's really rediscovered himself. But for me, the best record of 2010 was his Band of Gypsies record. Or a Band of Joy. I mean. oh, band of Joy, yeah. Band of, but, yeah, Gypsies. Yeah, band of Joy. <laughs> yeah, Band of Gypsies, uh, to Jimmy. Um, but band of, the Band of Joy record, and it was, it was like funny that he put that name back together because in the mid 60s that was the band that he and john bonham formed before jimmy page came knocking at their door saying hey i'm I'm forming this new band where i'm going to call it the new yardbirds and then they wound up chaining it to led zeppelin um um because who said that keith moon he said like you know if you use the name the new yardbirds it's gonna sink like a led zeppelin and Mm -hmm. They said, like, that's the name we're choosing. That's the name. Nice. <laughs> um, nice. So his Band of Joy record is phenomenal. It's my favorite album of 2010. Um, and he continues to make great records. I don't like the first the first record. And maybe the first record he did was Alison Krauss was, was brilliant. And the second <laughs> one was good, not as good as the first. And, and then when he when he played, when he had that band with uh, – uh, the incredible shapeshifters the the, the guys I, I just love the way the guy challenges himself and rediscovers himself and mm-hmm. just keeps plugging along and you know i tip my hat when zeppelin could have like cashed in and you know 15 years ago and went on a world tour and he said no i my voice wouldn't wouldn't hold uh hold up over a long tour and i'm not interested in going back i just wanted my music to move forward and so I can't yeah. remember. Is there like a signature song off that album? I can't think of it. Uh, no. Nah. It is, I, I would say there is a DVD or a, or a, a live version that you there's can There's a watch. live, yeah, there's a live thing you can see on the theater. On, uh, it's excellent. It's excellent. You yeah, on YouTube. Um, I can't, I can't there. remember like the, the main song off it, but what's it's. I'll bring it up. It's a it's a fantastic record. He he he's a chameleon as far as I'm concerned. I, yeah, I, I, told, I, like... I, I said to somebody the other day. I said, it's almost like he'll go in the studio and there's somebody there who goes, um, 
well, what about the range? And he'll just go, I'll find my range. Yeah. How yeah, I and, want it. And, right? and I think for me, every record, every solo record that he's put out has been my favorite album of, of that that year. Even like the records he did with Alison Krauss. And people say like, oh, like his records are so different. and They don't sound anything like Led Zeppelin. And I said, right, well, right. Led Zeppelin didn't sound like anything like Led Zeppelin because they had like harder stuff. They had some folk stuff. They had Celtic stuff. They had, you know, just, I mean, like their their albums were pretty diverse too. But people just think like, oh, they were heavy all the time and they weren't. True. It's true. They, they certainly weren't. So of the singles that were put out on that one... Boy, they normally have them listed. I don't know. Oh, I guess is why it's doing that. All right. Anyway, you know, it's so kind of like or, it's organic, like pumpkin. Everyone has different shape, sizes, pumpkins. But at the end of the day, you're taking it home to make a kick-ass jack-o'-lantern. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so the songs are "Angel Dance." That's I, that was the lead track. Yeah. I think it, I want to say it was that and house and of that, cards. And "Angel Dance." That's a Los Lobos tune. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, House of Cards, Central 209, Silver Rider, You Can't Buy My Love, Falling in Love Again, The Only Sound That Matters, Monkey, uh, Cindy, I'll Marry You Someday, Harms, Swift Way, Satan, Your Kingdom Must Come Down, excellent yeah, and alive thing yeah, to do that yeah, one. Yeah, great. Ridiculous. Song. Barry but, Harkins yeah, back to, yeah. Yeah, but a a Angel Dance, the Lost Lobos track, was the lead, lead track off the record he he's a cover guy he he, he throws in some some good yeah. covers yeah for sure love that love that we got mark okay well see who knows you have me a well. tie this time oh yes yes so what's my number one album probably neil young yes I'm controversial to say the least, in most cases, uh, I don't. I I, I want to say that Lenoise, which came out, it's his thirtieth studio album. Um, this was built completely and utterly around a guitar made for him by Daniel Lenoir. Yeah, I don't understand how it works because I'm not a musician. I wish I was because I would be way cooler, more popular. Um, but apparently. It has a top part that um, can play one structure, and the bottom is loose enough to be a bass and to some degree, from what I understand. Um, it's a one-of-a-kind guitar, and uh, anything. It's, it's like you did with Tweedy, right? And Ry Cooter producing people's records. If you follow these people who produce records mm -hmm. who are musicians, because if they're producing somebody, it's interesting, it's going to be fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm and different and uh maybe sometimes in a wheelhouse not not normal but this is the original version of hitchhiker which was recorded in 1976 which would be put on this album um this is a, an electric album it's not an acoustic record it right. has a lot of feedback but this is neil young being crazy horse all by himself and um there are a lot of songs apparently that didn't make this a recording so i'm hoping when we get to those his bootleg series, uh, it'll be on there. A lot there's, of that stuff. There's many songs that don't make it on many Neil albums. Yes. So I'm, yeah, I, it's, it's, I mean, I have my catalog of Neil Young is, you know, crazy, at, you know. Yeah. But um, there are some where I just go, hmm, might have been a little overdone and not necessary. Um, Bob Dylan's like that too. There's some songs like, okay, I don't need that seventh take of that one, but. So walk with me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed Angry World. Uh, I said they said I talked about the Hitchhiker, um, Sign of Love. Something's gonna, uh, someone's gonna rescue you. Love and War. This was probably the last Neil Young record that I recall. Yeah, more than likely being extremely smitten with. Um, but th since this record, I think it's been a hit miss kind of thing. Um, I saw I'm, that tour. Did you? Oh, that would have been great. It, it played at Shays, yeah. And it was just him. Oh, wait a minute. 
we saw him at Chase. Was it 2010, Sue? No. No, we saw him later, right? No, oh, wait, wait, Greendale. Wait. Greendale no, would have no, been after. Greendale's no, after. No, this, no, no, right? no. We did. No, we did because my dad passed um, October 2010 and we saw him, right? Jeff, was that the show where he just walked around and grabbed whatever he wanted to and played whatever he wanted to? It was just, yeah. It was just. Did uh, he just yeah. walk around and did he play a song for his. Um, <laughs> What was the, oh, God, what is so self I remember where we were sitting. We were sitting, like, way up on the left. Way yeah, up on the left, yeah, up in the me. upper deck. Yeah. Um, He played a song for his grandchild, maybe, at the, uh, at the uh, organ. Uh, maybe. And I just probably, went. Probably. I mean, I like, did, 13 years ago. I mean, I've seen so many Neil shows. I, yeah. But that, yeah. That, one was, that one was different. That was a different solo Neil show than than anything than any other Neil solo show I've seen. Yeah, that might have been but except actually, well, Tran the Trans tour was pretty unique. Oh, that that's an entirely new one of these days. We'll have to talk about the catalog of Neil Young. <laughs> Try to take a day and a half. Uh, well, the the last few years because he's in the Daryl Hannah curse. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to. I certainly. I, there's a couple of every time he starts singing about mother, the earth and that, I'm like, okay, I'm out. I, I love you, man, but stop. Just call call up. Uh, what's his name there? Jackson Brown. No, the his guitar buddy from Crazy Horse, Neil Lofgren. Yeah, tell, call him up and say I'm going to do that. No, just come out to the barn. We'll do something else. They've done a couple albums at the barn where no. Yeah, I like the barn session. It was the, the last the last couple records, which but yeah. he's he's still under Daryl Hannah curse. Yeah. So that that's my uh that's my number one. Um does anybody have any honorable mentions quick? I mean, honestly, Daryl Hannah's ever since she lost her eye and she learned how to use that sword. <laughs> pretty evil. I mean <laughs> She never survived the Quentin Tarantino experience. Well, Jackson Brown made his worst uh, worst records, records when he was with her. So, <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, honorable mention. How about uh, Drive By Truckers, the big to do? Yeah, yeah. Good um, Ray La Montage, God Willing, and the Creek Don't Rise. Yeah, that that was an album I I saw and I'm like I I couldn't remember. I like I have every record. And I, I want to say that would be like my number two choice, like of, of all the records he has, because I really like that record. Yeah. His his debut was excellent. Here's here's one from uh, uh, left field. Tom Jones. Yeah, I'm that would be in my pray, wow. praise, praise and blame. OK, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Like Paul Not, Anka doing rock and roll or something mm, like that. No, no. no Tom. Tom Jones, you you strip away the Vegas, the bow tie, the the tux, and he's an R and B singer, R and B and blues singer. You okay. go to, like praise and blame. Yeah, it's like a, right. a like a like a bluesy gospel record, okay. and, and he's like 2010. So, you know, 13 years ago, he was probably what late 60s, 70, 70 maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. It'll surprise you. All right. I'm I'm down. I'm down. We were just talking like, like last week it was when uh, we were talking about Canadian albums that we were talking about Paul Anka and his he did a rock thing and it was really good. I, I thought his versions were pretty good. Like he's got some of the he's most famous for he's got more hit number one hits than anybody. Yeah. Uh, uh Jeff Sue, anything? No, There's my... some I'd want to, but they're not none of them. Really, nothing really is hitting me, so no. Okay, I have two, and these were probably the two that Sue was thinking might have been. Well, one of them. I don't know. This is Gord Downey's "The Grand Bounce" mm. with uh, Gord Downey and the Country of Miracles. I want to say was the, the band we're traveling with. I think this is really one of, at that point of all the solo records that he had, this one had the most um, feel and rhythm to it, and uh, the most tracks that I enjoyed. Um, it's having the most fun with it too. Um, and my other one is another G. So I get Gord Downey and the Country of Miracles. And my other one is from New Orleans, the band Galactic and a Yakame, uh, which the New Orleans, I, I absolutely love Stanton Moore as a drummer. 
anything he touches, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be on that record. I gotta, gotta get on that record. But this, they invited a whole crud load of people. Trombone Shorty's on here. There's some great uh, hip hop artists that pop on and do their thing. And um, it, it's a wild record. Usually every Galactic record is a wild record. Uh, they they hold to no formation, uh, but there's always that New Orleans jazz kind of feel uh, to it, and they they're always a, a favorite of mine. Um, you know, there there were a bunch of records that I thought were were good enough to be on that on the list, just to be on the list. But uh, those two stood out. Um, if you're looking for, I think we touched every genre just about, which is good. You know, I. And that was the the main stay of this. It was like I didn't want you know. There's like these years where there's no jazz. There's no nobody said talks about the things. I think everybody had a pretty good list. There's pop. There's jazz. There's rock. There's. Um, but I want to ask a question. How many people know Justin Towns Earl? Yeah. Yeah. On uh, that's Earl's kid, right, Steve Earl? Yeah. Okay. So his record, Harlem River Blues, on most of the, I don't know what I'll call it, most of the internet searches and stuff, he was number one or number two, and this uh, Anais Mitchell, Hades Town, was number one or number two. Hmm. The Ana Hades Town album is more like a folk disturbing folk record um which i thought was kind of cool but her vocal uh, i i couldn't take um justin towns earl that harlem river blues i had no idea what it was and i i put that on and it's 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 a good ride i i don't know if he i don't compare him to his dad really i don't think um totally different wheelhouse so to speak anyway um first of all i want to thank my panelists for for doing this it's an undertaking, uh, especially when it's a difficult year. Um, the we'll be back in two weeks for the final decade, 2020. I suggest if you're going to join us for this one, it's going to take some time. It's a it's a 2010, 2020, another struggle, I think. Um, also noting to, uh, that tomorrow album review Saturday, don't miss that. A lot of good records on this one. Next week, album listen challenge is Angels in Science Fiction by St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Please hit the like button because the algorithm would love that. Uh, we love comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're on the web at www.beyondyourradio.com. Thanks for watching and happy listening. <laughs>